Miss Heaton, signing in to talk with you about heat of combustion. You may hear this referred to as heat content, but the way we're going to mostly talk about it is heat of combustion, because what it tells us is how much energy is given off when it's burning. Um, for example, you might want to know what the heat content or the heat of combustion is for a Cheeto, because when you eat a Cheeto, you want to know how many calories you're eating for every gram of Cheeto that you eat. Uh, so here's the problem with calorimetry. Uh, in order to figure out how much energy the Cheeto has, you'd have to like have it hot and put it into a cold cup of water, but it's not going to burn if it's in a cup of water. And we also can't really find the final temperature of a burning Cheeto, because when it stops burning, there's no flame, and how do you find the temperature of a solid? It's just very complicated. So instead, we use the heat of combustion. Here's the equation that you'll want to write down for that. The heat of combustion is the heat lost by that object after it burns, divided by how much of it burned. Because here's the thing, when you burn a Cheeto or a piece of wood, there's usually some of it left behind. You don't burn all of its weight away. So we just figure out how much actually burned. Uh, so the mass that burned is going to be equal to its change in mass. So how much did it weigh at the end? A little bit. Minus how much it weighed at the beginning, which is a lot. So the mass burned would be a negative number. And then here's the other problem. The heat lost by the object we don't know the specific heat capacity of most of these things that we're burning. It's hard to find the initial and final temperatures of a solid. Uh, so what we will use instead is the idea behind calorimetry, the law of conservation of energy, that any heat that was lost by the burning object is opposite of the heat that was gained by stuff around it. And if we can filter all of that burning energy, all of that heat, into an object, say like a can of water, we can figure out how much heat that the Cheeto lost. Because if that water gains a thousand calories of energy, that means the Cheeto lost a thousand calories of energy. So let's show an example of the kind of calculation you'd see for this. Um, for example, if you had a piece of wood burning in a stove, it maybe it weighed 250 grams at the beginning, and it had two liters of water above it, and the temperature of that water as the wood burned went from 25 degrees Celsius up to 45 degrees Celsius. At the end, you had 50 grams of wood that had not burned. If we could find the heat of combustion, what would it be in calories per gram? So the first thing you'll want to do, if we look back up at our equation here, we want to know how much heat was lost by, lost by the object and how much of it burned. Uh, and to find the heat lost by the object, we want to figure out how much the other object, the water in this case, gained. So what we'll do is say, okay, well, two liters of water, we can figure out how many milliliters that is because one, whoops, I have my units backwards here. One liter of water is equal to a thousand milliliters of water. So that would be 2000 milliliters of water. But we want to know the mass, right? Because Q equals M times C times delta T. Uh, so remember for water that the density is one gram per milliliter, so if you have 2,000 milliliters, that would weigh about 2,000 grams. And we will then plug that into our specific heat capacity equation, Q equals mc delta T. Uh, the mass of the water was 2,000. The specific heat capacity of water in calories is 1. And the change in temperature for the water, well, it went from 25 up to 45. So that had a positive change of 20 degrees Celsius. When you multiply that out, you get 40,000 calories of energy. That's quite a bit. If we wanted to know then how much heat that the wood had given off, well, if the water gained 40,000, the wood must have lost 40,000 because the heat gained by the water is opposite of the heat given off by the burning stuff. So the wood in this case gave off 40,000 calories. Now we're ready to find our heat of combustion or our heat content. Let's use the correct word here, heat of combustion, because that's what we're doing. We are combusting that wood. Remember that it's going to be the heat lost by the wood divided by how much the wood's mass changed, how much it would actually burn. So we'll do that negative 40,000 calories that it gave off and divide it by its final mass, which was 50 grams, subtracted from its initial mass, which was 250 grams. So that's basically 40,000 divided by negative 200, which turns out to be 200 calories per gram. Uh, with sig figs, let's see, sig figs, they are our friends because they tell us if we're sure of our answer or not. 
looks like the one that has least, er, actually there's four of them that have three sig figs, and that's the least. So our answer should have three sig figs. So we'll say 200 point, which would give it two si three sig figs. Hey folks, that's heat of combustion in a nutshell. Um, by the way, in class, you will probably get to do a lab where you design an experiment to figure out the heat of combustion of some sort of object. When you're doing that, think not only about the data that you need to collect, but also where your errors are gonna come from and come up with ways of preventing those errors from happening in your experiment. That's all the tips I've got for you today. This is Ms. Heaton, signing out.